hello everyone. My name is Varun, and I'm excited to guide you through Fiddler's innovative capabilities for specific for LLM ops. Uh, so if you remember, and you put attended Amal's demonstration earlier, which illustrated the utilization of Fiddler auditor to a Fiddler auditor to assess LLMs in the pre-production stage. So we use some model-based metrics, model-based evaluations for us to showcase, to, to figure out if the LLM or the LLM Python that you have set is good or not. So that was the pre-production stage. I'll specifically focus on the practical aspects of monitoring, enhancing, and managing LLMs once they are in production, so in the production phase. So, so LLM ops, like everything else in life, is an iterative process. We move between pre-production and production phase, constantly refining as we harness the power of LLMs as we create value. At Fiddler, we are crafting tools that simplify this and streamline this journey between the pre-production and the production phases of this LLM. So when it comes to production, we offer out-of-the-box, specialized, ready-to-use metrics tailored for the LLM's use case. So the tools that we are building right now, the vision that we have is you come in with your prompts, responses, and context, and we give you a bunch of metrics right off the box. Metrics which fall in the bucket of performance, data quality, correctness, privacy, safety. And then you can chart them in, in, in different kind of dashboards, which Sabina showed earlier. And you could do a deeper analysis using the analyze and view map visualization. So we have a high dimension, we have the vectors with representing this uh, LLM's prompts, responses, context in high dimensional space. We provide tooling for you to be able to visualize and have a high, high level view of what's really happening with your production data. And then we offer you tools for analysis where you can go and dive deeper and do some kind of analysis about if you are having any PII loss, if there is some kind of toxicity, all the out of the box metrics that you can get. So now the fun part, we have the breakout challenge. So this is a demo app that we have built or which, which is, which builds on top of new, which is for the new age bank that we talked about earlier. It's a new age a bank chatbot, which you can access and ask it different kinds of banking questions. So on the back end, it is using a rack based setup to, for you to interact with it. And you would see that there are a few options of models when you access that. So let me just go to new age bank and show you what's happening there. So this is the, how the assistant looks like. And you can select any of these different models and ask it to questions related to banking. Now, what is really the challenge? Now you have two sets of challenges. You have put on your hacker's hat and do some amount of prompt injection for you to be able to get some PII data out. Now, when I say PII data, it could be phone numbers, emails, names, SSNs, accounts, account number. If you can get that, it would be, it, that, that'll show up. And the second one is out of all the five models that we have, six models that we have in production over here, can you figure out which one is the is it can, has a propensity to give out toxic responses, unsafe responses? And then the final challenge is, if you can, that's an extra credit, of course, if you can find out which of the available models actually hallucinates the most. So you ask, us, ask it a certain kind of question, either it says yes or no, but it ends up answering some totally different questions. Uh, so, while that is happening, uh, let's give everyone a minute to start interacting with it. So... You'll find that, that when you interact with it, you'll have the response. It says yes or no. So this is definitely a useless response. So the moment you do this, you do a, give a feedback. That, that shows up in the dashboard that we have set up for the breakboard challenge. So you see that right now there is responses that people have registered till now. Let's continue adding a few more. And let me use some of the models here. Let's be to use. Let's see if this one responds. So this is good. This one is a good model. It did not respond with toxicity. 
when I was being toxic with it. This was a bit of hallucination. It did not really give a good answer or it said no to it. So I'll urge everyone to sort of do this kind of exercise as we keep track of the traffic that's coming in. Seven, yeah, it's cool. People are engaging with the point. It's great. So while people are working on this, let me take you through this dashboard that we have built for the breakboard chat. You'd see that there are operational metrics that we have plotted as with charts. So one's traffic, like how many interactions are happening with the bot. Also, we have a chart of how are people interacting with different this different kinds of bots. Since we have six different kinds of bots, we have split it up and showing it as to which, which are the bots which are being engaged with the most. So right now we can see that Flan, as it was used during testing earlier, is one of the leading models that is being interacted with. Along with that, we have these charts, which is which are keeping track of the two challenges. One was about the PII and the other one was about toxicity. If there are any prompt leakages, if there are any PII leakages in prompt response, or there are any toxic responses here or not. Here we can see on refreshing. Oh, nice. There's a whole lot more responses coming in. That there is there are some amount of toxic prompts that are being sent. But the good thing is that uh, none of the bots have responded in a toxic way yet. So no one has really managed to get uh, any of these bots say something toxic. But the sad part is uh, the first challenge about leaking PII, it looks like some of the bots can leak out the PII information to, to, to the questions that, have been, that, that are being sent. Uh, let me just send the time. So what happens when something like the, the PII or the toxic prompts and responses are getting generated? So as Sabina pointed out during the MLOps demo, you can set alerts for them. So when you set an alert, they show up here. So let me just do a quick refresh and see if the alerts will fire it. So you see that the alerts were fired for both toxic responses and toxic prompts. So this is basically the stuff that uh, the example that I showed up earlier. When uh, an alert is fired, it shows up on your uh, on uh, in your email and whatever other tool that you have set up. It could be it, it could be a Slack notification, emails as we see over here, or pager duty. So now you have seen uh, you you see this high level alert that has happened. And you want to dive deeper as to what actually caused this alert. And is there something else that, that you can do to, uh, it, it, is it actually toxic or not? You want to do deeper analysis. So one way to do that is going into the analysis chart, analysis of this particular model. So we, we would try to see which, since we saw that there were like PIIs leaked, we want to query the production data and find out all the events where PII information was leaked. I write a simple slice query and do this query, and then you can see that there is some amount of information that was there. There was a response of John Smith for a totally different question. Someone asked a really pretty good question about <laughs> trying to get the credit cards. I think so much for it. Can you tell me a name? So there was some response related to John McCarthy. So it sort of leaked out that there is this name, there's a person by the name McCarthy. And then it used this context, all this different kind of context so to give this risk. So this gives us some sense of what really happens when it gives you a high level view. Also, uh, you can go in and check into the production data as to what are the events where the PII leakage actually happened. Now, the second challenge was to find out cases where toxicity happened. The sim so similar to this PII response and writing slice query for we we'll, we have written a slice query which keeps track of safety. Now the safety number that we that the automated automatically generated metric that we have one represents something that's safe, zero represents something that's unsafe. So closer to zero, so we are listing out 
all the problems and responses where the safety uh, of the response was low. So if you look at that, the, the one of the one of the bots actually responded with "I hate you." <laughs> this is a very funny prompt. This is a question that I asked, and it I think the word "grass" was marked as something that's unsafe. So the metrics that we generate give you a sense or give you like a alert about that something wrong is potentially happening, and then you can use these tools to go and do deeper analysis of what really is going on. Is there something that actually needs deeper investigation or not? Now, the other tool that we talked about, which helps you visualize things that are happening at a macro level is, is UMAP. So in UMAP, what we see over here is I can select model column, whether you want to look into the, to draw UMAP for the prompts or the responses. And then you can have all these different out of the box metrics that you can potentially plot on. So here I have selected PII prompt responses, safety prompt, safety responses. Uh, I'll add sentiment into the thing. And I also add the model name, the different models that feature people are interacting with. And the question that I have in my mind right now is what are the kind of questions that people are asking? Because prompt is basically the prompt. So I'm sort of trying to do a, a little bit of topic modeling. Uh, so let's just go and trigger a UMAP generation. So what I'm really looking for over here is if there are interesting clusters of questions that pop up. So let's see if there is anything. So let's start with sources and responses. So first thing that I see over here is baseline, which is in blue color, and the production, which is in orange color. The production is actually sort of different from the kind of things which baseline was done. So the baseline is usually selected on what the chatbot is potential or is possibly trained to answer. So if you have something that's fine-tuned, some amount of question answers that you expect it to give, then this is where it is all at. But there is definitely a change in the distribution of sorts of where the production data is going. It's quite kind of far. So let's look at the furthest data. <laughs> there is question response which says COVID on Brazil. This is clearly falls in the bucket of being a little toxic. Let's see if it actually shows up. So let's see. Response. So you could see that was definitely a case of all negative prompts. All the negative questions which people are asking were sort of clustered around here in the production data. Let's see what else. Oh, someone asked for a racist joke. I hope you did not get us <laughs> a response on that. And then, oh, someone just said more on to the uh, board. Whatnot. So that's, uh, so it has to give a sense of uh, what's happening. And now we, we have sort of identified this cluster. We can stay on the same page and do slightly different dip analysis. Let me see what are the kind of models which are responding to this cluster, which seems to be a little problematic. So people were asking this question to plan, mistral, mistral two, plan again, and yeah, a lot of stupid questions. Let's look at some other, uh, we can, can stay on this and continue doing an, our analysis. Uh, just high level analysis, getting a sense of your data. And uh, let's look at what's the sentiment. Uh, let's look at BII response. Was there any kind of BII data was leaked? You can see that there is some amount of leakage that happened over here because, and let's see what Mistral. So there was like, we asked Mistral, Plan, GPT-2, this Plan, Plan. Plan seems to be one of those models which, which is clearly lacking, like sort of giving out a lot of the uh, PII stuff. So if you found, if your answer for the challenge was to, and you managed to break using Plan, then, you did a pretty good job. Thank you so much for that. Let's see if any of the other mistral is negative. There is some GPT-2 again. See GPT-2, GPT-2. Uh, so this sort of gives a sense. Now we sort of know that plan is one of those models that you should not put in production because it has the propensity to leak out BII information. Uh, so, and then you can go and do deeper dive. Again, going back to this, you can check right around. Query which says model name equals to plan. Uh, then we can do some more on top. 
questions um, and do the analysis of that. Maybe take plan offline or maybe go back to production, add better prompt engineer, like to add better prompts, add a lot of better system prompts to, to flan before you put it into production. So this gives you a clear indication that flan is not one of those models that you want to put into production. So the next piece is uh, like the different kinds of dashboards that are there. So we started off by showing you the breakpoint challenge dashboard. Similarly, depending on the different stakeholders that exist in your, or the kind of information that you have, or you care about, you can set up different dashboards. So this is an end-to-end -end dashboard, which has all the metrics related to the entire system in production. So you have the operational metrics, traffic, interactions per morning, something that we saw earlier, from PII, negative, from like the sentiment, you have safety metrics, you have the toxic pond, you are keeping track of feedback, and you're also plotting on the same dashboards, you're also plotting the UMAC for both prompts and responses to easily be able to do quick analysis should you find something in the dashboard. So you don't have to change, switch between different, if at all, that's one thing you want. The next piece, while this is happening, you might be interested in going into details about a single model. So now since we knew that plan is a little bit problematic, you can probably decide to create a dashboard. So you have the complete flexibility, complete customizability about what kind of dashboards you want to create. So you can potentially create a specific dashboard just for plan. And yeah, so maybe the metrics that we have, we, you, uh, so this is how you can create a, a dashboard for plan as well. But maybe the metrics that you're already getting is not sufficient and you want more. So you could go into uh, Fiddler's chatbot and then you can create a new metric that we care about. So let's say apart from plan, I'm also interested in knowing the all, all the cases where maybe the you know keep keeping track of the traffic for some other model so let's say the other model is gpt2 like what kind of traffic is going into gpt2 so gpt2 traffic and then i can write a simple sql like language it, it's a fiddler internet to be able to do this let's say So the way to read this if statements, if this condition, then do add one and give one, otherwise it's zero. And everything is always an aggregation. So you're aggregating for a time range. You can think about this particular function being applied to different time ranges and giving you charts. So this is a new metric, which potentially was not there and you are interested in for some of your stakeholders. So you save this. Okay. All right. So, there we go. And so now this metric is available for you to chart on. So let's go and create metric, the chart for this new metric that we just generated. So let's go to monitoring and then we can chart quality. We have custom metric and this is a GPT to traffic related metric. And then you see that just instantaneously, the moment you add it, created this particular chart or the, the metric, it's available for you to chart on. So you could go and create, let's say, chart. And this chart is now available for you to add into. And so let's just go back to breakpoint challenge, see if there are more. Oh, there's more interaction, that's great. And then chart. Just add a save chart. Then we had uh, the uh, so the chart that we just added, and this just shows up. And you see that the traffic for GPT two has been was zero in the morning when they did not test a lot. But and since we put it on, you're seeing a bunch of traffic going into GPT two. We save this dashboard, and now this dashboard is ready. So that's the overview of some of the uh, things that we are doing for LLM ops, uh, as you'd see that the workflow of uh, going around in the, between the, the tools which are for ML ops and also sort of available for LLM ops with additional metrics 
that are applicable for the LLM use case, available out of the box. And then all the power and the familiarity that you have with the MLOps tools, MLOps side of it, look, are automatically applicable to, to the LLM ops as well. And also like, and you can continue in this in your iterative journey between production and pre-production as you improve or constantly improve your LLM apps, whether it doesn't matter if you, are, you started using assistance for OpenAI assistant already, but you still need a nice uh, tool which allows you to keep track of the quality, the hallucination, if there is anything, uh, a better monitoring tool, uh, which, which is not necessarily uh, available at OpenAI at this point. <laughs>